Good morning. Good to see all of you guys. We're going to do, I uh, remember last week I talked to you about Open the Eyes of My Heart. Well, Denise and Barb were able to help me to put it in for an intro it today. So we're going to go through it, um, the f first verse and the second, and then we'll sing it all, to all together. So we'll practice one time, Denise. Good morning, and welcome to the First Congregational United Church of Christ in Elkhorn. We're glad you're with us here in person or watching us later in the day on our YouTube channel. We are thankful to have Reverend Kathleen Crostel here with us as our bridge pastor, and thank you to Denise for providing our music today. Uh, please join me in the call to worship. We come to worship you, Almighty God, in the tradition of the early followers who joined with other believers and devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship in prayer. May the deep sense of awe that we came over them come over us now. The early Christians worshipped with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. Help us, Lord, to worship you with joy and generosity also. Now our opening prayer. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even though I walk through the dark valley of death, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You welcome me as a guest, anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. We pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Welcoming him, Lord, we give the great commission and the fear of the Lord.
just to comment on the song we just sang, it covers a number of things that are part of the theme today. It talks about God and following and letting us be into the ministry that he gives each one of us. And now we're going to have the historic reading from John chapter 10, verses 1 to 16. Jesus, the Good Shepherd. And as we're talking about this, I'd like you to picture in your mind um, a house, uh, like it's probably a way station, and then in front of it is a stone wall where all the shepherds bring their flocks. So it's not just a sheep pen with one flock, it's got all the flocks in it. And the importance of that is when Jesus talks about the sheep hearing their shepherd's voice. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not come into the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him. The sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from the stranger because they do not know the voice. Jesus used this figure of speech with them. He was actually primarily talking to the Pharisees, who were great rule followers. But they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again he said, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are who came before are thieves and bandits. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I come that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Well, you all can see the picture of laughing Jesus up there. And it's very, very special to me. I've known about this picture since the 1980s when I was a young mother and had twins. And then I was divorced. And then I was teaching. And in the middle of the teaching, some good people there saw I was a little worn out. And they knew that I was very into the spirit. And so they said, We'll watch the kids this weekend, and you go to Notre Dame and participate in this charismatic conference of the filling of the Holy Spirit. So I was thrilled. I hate to tell you, but I was kind of thrilled to get away from the kids. But I also needed the uplift. So I said, oh, sure, no problem, right? Well, I went to the conference and loved every minute of it, and between sessions, there was a little, like, set up bookstore, and they had 
a small picture, about they had eight by tens and five by sevens of laughing Jesus. I call it laughing Jesus, but it ge really the title is Jesus laughing. So anyway, I see this picture and I remembered it from our church. They had one at the church. And I thought, oh wow, would I love to have one of those pictures? And I kept, I'd go to the little stand and I'd look. Well, the eight by 10, you're gonna laugh, I know. But the eight by 10 was $5 in color. And the, this is color, by the way. And the five by seven was brown on brown. So every time I'd go, I'd look at it and I'd come back and worship and look at it and come back. What the problem was is I was a single parent working at a parochial school at half the salary that the public school teachers got, and so money was a premium for me. So I'd look at the picture, and the big one was five in color, and the other one was 250, and I had to weigh, did I want lunch, or did I want the colored picture? Well, the colored picture won out, all right? So I got the big picture, and I probably had a coffee or whatever they were serving for there, and then I went on my merry way, had the picture, was that, and one day, would you believe, the, I got a message that a friend of mine, her name was Gail, that Gail was in the hospital. Well, I had moved from that community, so I was about 40 minutes or more from the hospital. And I thought, hmm, how am I gonna do this? Well, I'll figure it out. And I decided I'm gonna go to see Gail. Well, during the day I'm teaching, thinking I'll go to see Gail tonight, whatever. Well, that meant I was gonna drive in the dark. I was wearing contacts. There, one of them was giving me a real trouble. I had had an uh, accident. I'll tell you about that some other time, but I had an accident, so I only had one headlight. So I thank God I didn't get a ticket. But anyway, I decided, well, I should really take her something if I'm gonna go and visit her, right? So I thought, oh, I'll take her a chocolate milkshake. And then I thought, no, Gail's trying to lose weight. That would be counterproductive. Let's see, what else could I take? So I thought of flowers. I said, yeah, and where are you gonna get the money for the flowers? I said, yeah, that's the truth. I'll just take her myself. I will be the Gail, right? And I thought, oh God, get over it. So then I, I thought, well, let's see now. And I'm going through my time and this thought keeps coming to me. Take her your picture of laughing Jesus. Well, I wasn't about to take that picture. And I thought, no way, that's my picture. I love that picture. Gives me strength, gives me comfort. I'm not taking that picture. Besides, what person would take a picture off their wall to somebody in the hospital? This is nuts. This is definitely a bad idea. Well, dang, it just kept hounding me. Take the picture, take the picture, take the picture. So when I was getting ready to go, I dropped my kids off to be cared for. I was gonna be going and there, my house was in the middle and there was a fork in the road and each side was equidistant. So I thought, don't you dare take the road that goes by your house. You'll run in there and grab that picture. I know you will. So I went the other way. And I get to the hospital, had a lovely visit with Gail and found out that the that was blood coming down her eyes and it was making her hard to see from the cancer. Anyway, long story short, I get ready to go and I probably said a prayer with her and I said, oh, by the way, Gail, is there anything you need? She said, yes. I have looked everywhere and I can't find a picture of Jesus laughing. <laughs> she said, well, you know, our friend, um, Janet works at three different Christian bookstores. Do you think they could find it? I said, well, um, Gail, you were supposed to have that picture tonight. Uh, God was working on me, but you know, sometimes we don't listen and I'm as stubborn as a mule. I said, I will be back tomorrow with the picture. Well, she was thrilled. Her face lit up, and I thought, okay, next time. So I get in the car, and I'm driving my 40 minutes home, and I said, now, God, you know I want to do what you want, and you also know I'm stubborn as a mule and dense, so I'm giving you my permission. Please, when you want something, don't be so subtle. You know, 
just bash me in the eyes and I'll get it and I'll do whatever you want. Well, when I was a teacher, I had a, the, we were doing something and the golf coach, no, the bas baseball coach, he came to us and he was telling us about, I'll never forget the kid's name and since it's in another state, I can say it. He was telling us about Ted Lezinski. Now, Ted Lezinski had his share of challenges and he was rebellious, but we got along fine. He was in my Spanish or religion class, I don't know. I really liked Ted, really liked him. He never gave me a minute's grief. Well, he told his baseball coach, he said, now look, smack me in the side of the head when you want to teach me something because that's the way it's always been done and I'll get it. And I'll never forget the baseball coach saying, He's such a good player, but I can't smack him in the side of the head. And we all said, well, of course not. So about two weeks later, he came and said Tem Ted left the baseball team because the coach, he didn't, co Ted, Ted didn't feel the coach could get through to him, and the coach wouldn't hit him. Can you imagine? So I realized what I was asking of God was something I wouldn't do to somebody if I wanted to respect them and they had free will. So I need to tell you guys, God is a real gentleman, and he's very gentle. And either you listen, or you're not going to hear. I'm a prime example, all right? So here we go again. I teach all day. My tail feathers are dragging on the ground. I got two little kids to take somewhere to be watched. And I get in the car with the one headlight. It's raining again, and my contacts haven't stopped bothering me. I said, see, if you had to come yesterday, you'd be free today. Do you realize that? I said, yeah, I know, I know. But, oh, well. So I get in the car, drive over. Well, yesterday, Gail was all by herself, and we had a lovely talk. But today, she had her six kids and her husband, and people were all around her. So I just kind of went in, tried to be as innocuous or as I could, inconspicuous as I could be, and I slipped the picture on her lap, and she had a little boy next to her. His name was Seamus. He was a trip. Anyway, he looked at that picture, and he said, who did that ugly coloring, all right? And Gail looked at it, and I'll never forget the look on her face. She got this look on her face that was just like, oh, wow. And I heard her say, isn't he beautiful. And I walked away and went home. And the next day I got word that she died. And all I could think was, God so loved Gail that he would harp and harp and harp at me who had the picture to take it. And I can't help but saying to you, I look into your eyes and I want you to really feel this. God so loves you that God will do what it takes to get you whatever you need. Whatever you need. Now, I've had a lot of times that I thought I needed something very, very much. And I prayed my heart out and I didn't get it. So what I want you to remember is just because you think you need it and just because you pray hard does not mean you're going to get it. And if you pray hard and think you need it and don't get it, guess what? You probably would have been hurt by it or it would have gotten the way for you loving God. So watch your life and look back at it and you'll see that what you didn't get, you got something better even though it took a while. And the people of God all said, Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Now, at the moment of gratitude, we actually have someone with a prayer request for gratitude. We want to include in our prayers Cheryl Dillner's friend, Dave, who just received a kidney. So as you sit here and give thanks for whatever it is you are thankful for, 
maybe we could all also remember Dave. We could sing the doxology now. difficulties with my preaching style is that I really want to talk to you, not read at you. And by doing that, there's things that I'll forget. So I have two sheets, one that's the actual message, but one that's bullets. But today, I got so excited to tell you the story of Laughing Jesus that I forgot the bullet points that were on the scripture reading and why this topic is powerful witness. Well, first of all, a witness, Merriam-Webster says, a witness is a person that knows something through experience or having seen it happen. So this, to me, is a powerful witness of how God works in our lives to bring us what we need, and to let us know that we're loved. It's also a witness to the stubbornness of some people, right? But God doesn't give up. That's one of the ways that I know I better pay attention. I don't know about you, but I'm always having thoughts come into my head all the time. Is every thought from God? Nope. Absolutely not. So how do I know the difference? Well. First of all, one way of knowing the difference is you measure it against what you know from your Christian upbringing and from the Bible. If it's against that, or, or, then you know it's not God. What if it keeps coming back and back and back? It could be an obsessive thought, <laughs> but it could be God. And in this instance, it was God trying to motivate the only person that had that picture available to dig over there. So it's real important. You might say, well, I don't hear God. My little guys, my, I say to them, now you listen for God's voice. Well, the girl, she's older now, and she just doesn't even pay attention to me. I mean, what does a grandmother know? And the little boy, though, he still listens. So one day he says to me, hey, Graham, God lied to me today. How did I have a hand in this one? I betcha. So I said, well, what happened? He said, well, you know, when we were playing that game of match where you have a bunch of cards and you turn them over and then you match them, he said, God told me to pick the one in the middle, and I did, and it didn't match. So he lied to me. I said, well, you know, I think we got to rethink this just a little, you know, there's a lot of things that are going to come into your head. It's not always God. Now, he's too little to really understand, but at least I gave him some. I said, you know, like your mom tells you stuff, and I tell you stuff, and, and people tell you stuff, and some people are mean, and they tell you the wrong thing. So you kind of got to try hard to figure it out. And it's not easy. Old Graham, she never gets it all the time either. But I want you to know, 
what are the things you have to do if you want to hear the voice of God? And you look at me like, how oh, God's not talking to me. Yes, he is. I can guarantee it. I guarantee you every day of your life, God is talking to you. Well, I don't hear anything. Well, I don't want to say anything, but who's, who's not hearing? Just because a mother tells a kid 16 times to do something doesn't mean she's not talking, right? Well, then, what can you and I do to hear the voice of God? What keeps us from hearing it? One thing that keeps us from hearing it is modern technology. You cannot be texting and reading your cell phone, and I do it all the time, all the time. You cannot be doing that 24-7, or at least the hours you're awake. I probably am a real high candidate for missing out on what God says because of that. My husband won't use a cell phone. He can't. He's got these, the fingers all, but he, he could talk and stuff on it. He, he doesn't care. He hears God a whole lot more than I do. He sits quietly and hears God. Sometimes I hear God when I'm driving. Sometimes I hear God when I'm walking. I love to walk. But distractions will keep you from hearing God, number one. So do I expect you to throw away your cell phone and just, no, I'm not going to do that. No way. We live in a beautiful world of technology. But could we choose to have a time? Maybe right before you get up, before you get out of bed. Just reminding God that you want to hear what he has to say. Open the ears of my head, Lord, right? So one thing is you've, you've got to calm yourself down and not be constantly going, even if it's for a short period of time. And two is you've got to ask God to let you listen, because I don't know if you're like me, but most people, I can ask right this minute, and the next minute I'm off running and forget to take any quiet time. And the third, the second one is prayer, and I gotta look on my notes, I can't remember the third one. Um, this is terrible, the thing is, I just can't keep it on these two things. I'll tell you next week, okay? I can't find it. That's why I don't pay attention to notes anyway. So I wanted to tell you that, and last I wanna tell you, the good shepherd came and gave me three things that maybe they're important to you. He came to give me a full, rich life, not to squash it. Same reason it says Jesus died that you might have life abundantly. The second reason that the good shepherd, thing the good shepherd gives me in that Psalm 23, you wonder, why do they read it at funerals all the time? We don't have any shepherds today much. It's because it captures everything we need. Telling us we have everything we need, telling us God will comfort us, telling us there's life after death and there's hope. So if ever you just have a bad moment, go look at 23. Psalm 23 covers it all. And may the God of Psalm 23 fill you and love you and bless all the concerns of your heart. And the people all said, Amen. I want to make sure you're right there with me. All right, and our closing hymn. Can that count as a prayer? Yeah. The closing hymn today is God of Grace and God of Glory, and sing it with your whole heart, 464.
Thanks to all of you for joining us in person and online for worship today. If you missed any of our entire, any of our earlier worship services, they are available on our YouTube channel. You can find a link to our channel along with other information about our church by going to our website, elkhornucc.org. Thank you to everyone that helped with the spring cleanup yesterday. We appreciate your help in sprucing up our building inside and out. This week is the annual salad luncheon. Salads may be brought to the church on Tuesday, May 2nd from 9 a.m. until 3 p.m. or from 9 a.m. until 10 a.m. on Wednesday. So Tuesday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. and Wednesday, 9 until 10. Um, so Wednesday is the day of the luncheon. And today, good news, we do not need help in setting up the chairs and tables as printed in the bulletin. Um, there were enough helpers on Thursday to get this done, so thank you to everybody that helped with that. We are looking for volunteers to help with our H2O high, Highway Cleanup next Saturday, May 6th at 9 a.m. We call it H2O because we are responsible for the stretch of County Highway A north of Elkhorn from County H to County O. So orange vests are provided and a foolproof cleanup plan has been devised to organize this cleanup. There's a sign-up sheet in the back of the sanctuary or contact Tom Stepp or the church office to help with this worthy project. Please consider supporting the ministries of our congregation with your financial gifts. There are offering plates in the back of the sanctuary as well as a PayPal tab on our church website. We appreciate all of your gifts. Thanks again for sharing in our worship service today. I received a phone call from a Pastor Christie, who now serves at Delavan UCC. And she wanted to meet with me. I was thrilled. She's a really, really fun person to be with. And she's asking uh, if we would uh, hear, hear her uh, appeal. Um, she wrote a grant, and she received $4,500 to start something called Community Dinner at the Delavan UCC. So no money from your church is being asked. But what they do is they have a table with toiletries, and they have another table with sack lunches, and they probably would like to have people at the community dinner. So Pastor Christie said, could I let you all know about it and see if there'd be somebody might be a contact for her, I've got the information. It's the last Thursday of every month from 5 to 6.30, so it was just last week. And um, the story she told me was really touching. Um, I've worked with homeless people a lot. I was a chaplain at a shelter for women. And one of the difficulties is when people don't live in a, um, a, a life that has a great set routine, not rigid, but just a routine, it's easy to get out of some of the habits that you and I just expect people to have. And so there can be a lot of discouragement when you try to get someone who's not on a routine or doesn't have maybe even a stable place they're coming from to do things, it's hard for them. It's very, very hard. One of the big uh, mistakes I made was I did a funeral for a man who was homeless and I asked the, his friend, if she would like to take some of the flowers with her. And she just looked at me and she said, are you out of your mind? And just what am I gonna do with flowers? And you know, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't in touch, I wasn't in tune, and she really set me straight fast, you know? <laughs> you know? So when C Pastor Christie was talking to me, I thought, well, good luck, you know, because what their goal is, and, I want to make this distinction to you because I didn't get it at first. I thought helping homeless people was a wonderful thing. I'm not saying it's not. But I kind of saw Pastor Christie's point. She said, how many times do we help the homeless people because we've got and they don't and we give it to them? We give them this dinner, or we give them whatever. She said, that is called charity. 
That's not law. I was always raised that charity was good, that charity comes from the word love. She said, and the problem with today, with so much charity, is we give, but we don't connect. We don't really, we're just giving from our abundance to somebody that doesn't have it, and it makes us feel good. She said, so this community dinner is actually, to all of us, be into something that's community, like the early Christians. So she said, I had a couple came with two children. They were homeless. They had a car, so they were able to get around, but they were definitely homeless. They had nothing. And that happens a lot easier than you and I can think. When my children were little, I remember this woman lived in this beautiful colonial house. They had two beautiful cars. They had four children, and she gave me two bicycles for my kids. I was thrilled. And when I went over to visit with her, we were talking, all of a sudden she just started to cry. I said, oh my, what's happening? She said, well, you know, we live in this beautiful house, we have two beautiful cars, we have our children and we have nice clothes, but no one knows each week I have to decide between toothpaste and milk. She said, my husband lost his job, and yes, he's got one, but it's at less than half the pay, and I've got all these kids, and I can't be out. She said, and we're making it week to week, hardly. I said, oh my, no one would know. You drive by, you see her car, you see her house, you see their clothes. She said, we got all that before he lost his job, and we'll be lucky if we hang on to it. So we don't always know, do we? But this community dinner will be a place where if you can't go because you can't, maybe you can find out from this Pastor Christy, can you pack lunches? Can you donate toiletries? You know how you might have samples that you got? There might be something you can do. So I'd ask uh, if anyone wants to be the contact with Pastor Christy, uh, let me know. I'll give you the sheet that has her name, number, email, or whatever. And if not, um, in any way, if you want help, uh, let me know. Let me know. We'll, we'll make sure she gets And they have a van, so they can pick up people. If you know somebody who would like to go to this community dinner it, and they can't get there, they have a van that can pick up people. So, All right. Now, the last thing I'm supposed to do is give you a, a blessing and let you go, right? So, may God, who loves you more than you even can love yourself, may the God who knows you right down into your fibers, may that God bless you with all you need and most of what you want, and may you be a blessing to others. And the people all said, you guys are getting good at this now. All right.